Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, all right. So, President Volatin Book met yesterday at the Federal Executive Council meeting and he made a statement that he inherited a bad economy and also corruption and unemployment as well. It has been the same line as the previous, as the previous administration. So, what can you say about that? What do you think? Well, I think what we have to do we want to analyze this uh, particular statement of who is Ahmed Bolachin? Before now, this is a man who told Nigeria that he was the one that instituted the past administration of Buhari. He, of course, single handedly ensured uh, that uh, Buhari emerged as the president of this country. And he also affirmed that uh, Buhari has done his best in serving the nation and that he's going to step into the shoes of Buhari. Only just to turn back on his statements. I think Nigerians are not uh, forgetful. If it suits soon about his previous antecedents and statements he has made over the past administration, that amounts to, of course, uh, double standards. As far as I'm concerned, this is a man who was part of the past or previous administration. You cannot separate Ahmed Bola Tidibu from the dispensation of Buhari because that is the same NBC destroying the Nigerian economy. So it's just a continuation of the past administration. As he said, he's going to step in the shoe. Of course, that simply uh, invariably tells us that he's happy with the past administration. For him to affirm that he's going to step into his shoe means, unfortunately, that Nigeria has nothing, of course, uh, to expect from him. Making reference to the past and this rather unfortunate, and the Nigeria, of course, is becoming more clearer to Nigerians that uh, they are just buying time under this administration. Because the game, of course, uh, blame seems not to. Uh, uh, we have not seen the end of such a uh, blame game. Rather than focusing on delivering dividends of democracy to the people, he's telling the Nigerians who are already, of course, losing their patience after the administration of Tinubu that ruined the entire economy, not even in the area of security, not even in the area of uh, social security, so, protection of life and property of Nigerian families is rather unfortunate. And this is coming from a man. That uh, much is expected, and uh, he is funding, of course, the Nigerian office at this time. All right, thank you very much. So, also yesterday we saw a report that we've been um, okay. We've been seeing reports last week that the presidency has passed down five billion naira to each governor to ease the, the stress of um, well subsidy to, as a palliative for them. But in recent times, during the COVID nineteen, we saw how it was being shared among the people. How, how people started. Uh, how they needed to go and loot those warehouses to get the palliative that should have been given to them by the government. And also in Bayelsa State yesterday, we saw another one that should have been given to the flood victims. So what do you think? Do you think uh, this five billion that has been given to the governors would go around as it ought to do? Do you think so? I salute the courage of those, of course, youths who are scattered away with the palliatives because you cannot continue to watch yourself die, have to death. Why the government has the responsibility of catering for the citizens, especially in such a time like this, just as what is obtainable in in a Western world, in economic mishaps, the government has the responsibility of concerning the effect of this, not just narrowing narrowing it down to the most vulnerable, who is not vulnerable in Nigeria as it stands now. Everybody is vulnerable in terms of insecurity, in terms of food security, social security. Nobody is being captured. So telling us under such a deceptive movement that uh, you are targeting the most vulnerable. As I'm standing here, I'm vulnerable because you don't even, you can't even ascertain, of course, uh, the, the, 
your 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 security in the in the next one hour. Everybody is vulnerable because you see what is happening. Jobs are no longer safe. You can't say, you can't uh, boast of job security. So what the government should have done, like the Western world, America and like Europe, they should deliver this palliative to individual address residents. Okay, uh, sorry, um, there, 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 are, there are some um, suggestions online that this palliative should have been a kind of palliative that will be distributed to the health sector or private the education sector or, and not in cash to the people. What do you think about that? Well, that would have been a better option, but not in a system that has failed. In terms of health security, even the health sector, the, lawyer, the, the doctors are still on strike, not being attended to. So, if they should vote such money, who will be there to attend the people? Possibly they will, of course, be looking at uh, the better Boko Haram to man uh, the, such positions. So, there is fundamental problems. The fabric of existence needs to be revisited. Because as it comes up, the governors and those political exposed persons are the most vulnerable. Why? Because what is meant for the masses will be cutted away by the same people who claim to be well to do. That is part of what to look at what is happening across the states. If not for few governors who has come, who you can see some level of commitment in, in disposing those uh, uh, relief materials down to the down to the, down to the vulnerable. 90% of them will divert it for the personal use and uh, of course to satisfy the, their own cravings and their crumbs is quite unfortunate. But I ask you a why do you stop the government from disposing this money to all the banks' accounts? They have provided BVM, they have provided MIM, they have provided other, of course, uh, social data, database that they could use to reach out to uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the Minister of Communication said they have captured more than 80 million Nigerians. So why not use that to get them individually if you really mean business? That getting these materials or money in the hands of those who, of course, have questionable characteristics, who fall below the integrity threshold limits. So it's kind of unfortunate. We are just uh, unfortunate to find ourselves here. All right, thank you very much. Let's go. To, um, let's um, delve into the post-election issues and the tribunal um, problems. All right. So Julius Abure this morning has said that um, there, are, there are chances, or he is saying it that Peter Obi would actually reclaim his mandate after the presidential election petitions at tribunal. Yeah. On what probabilities do you think he can reclaim his mandate, you know, considering the fact that our judiciary, you know, Nigerians believe that the judiciary is not, is not too, too, let's say, not too capable or nothing to write them about. So, on what probabilities do you think uh, Peter Obi can reclaim his mandate? Well, I think uh, we have to leave that uh, bearing all circumstances until, of course, uh, the final pronouncement is been made by the, uh, the judges of the tribunal. It is a much anticipated, of course, uh, judgment, and uh, everybody is interested. By everybody, I mean the majority of the population of the Nigerian state, even those in diaspora. Some the, the community of nations are also interested in the outcome of such a and that will redefine the way forward. Either it makes Nigeria or mass the existence of Nigeria. Because you cannot talk about moving forward without, of course, uh, a recourse to the, uh, uh, to, to the cost of justice. Justice must be served, and that is what people are expecting. And I hope, of course, uh, the judges understood the, 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 the the, the body language of the masses, that they cannot continue to tolerate 
such a abnormality within the society. So the reality is that people must learn to take responsibilities, especially the judges at this time. They are called and entrusted with the mandate of delivering justice, and justice must be seen to have been delivered by the judiciary. It's not be seen by all. It's not something you must cover up. So I don't know what is waiting upon what they are waiting to declare this uh, position. But whatever happens, we have seen, we have studied, we have met, of course, uh, our findings based on the electoral of the evidence submitted at the tribunal. And how, of course, uh, the FPC was they were unable to defend themselves or to argue their case, how they were able to win the, the majority of the Nigerian votes. It has been largely, of course, uh, alleged that the mandate of the people was stolen. And of course, uh, Obi and Atiku has made their argument. Now we are waiting for the tribunal for the final position, which of course uh, we are lettered and we know what the constitution stipulates. That any man who does not score 25% in two third of the states and FCT will not be declared, of course, the president. So, invariably, based on the provisions of the constitution, Ahmed Bola Tinubu was declared the president of Nigeria in error. And I think that such a lacuna should be addressed by uh, those consigned. All right. Lastly, um, let's uh, talk about the Niger Junta. Yeah, so there are fears that um, the federal government and the ECOWAS, ECOWAS as well, um, how they are handling the issue. So should they or just go all out by, you know, going out with force or, you know, still continue with consultations, over consultations? Because the Niger Junta um, people, these guys are not, are, they are not standing down they are not backing down and they are giving ECOWAS three years to leave them in power, like let them do their thing in three years. But ECOWAS is telling them now that uh, that three years is too much. It's just like saying that you don't want to leave power anymore. So do you think they should go in all out, they should go all out and face these Jota guys or they should keep on consulting? Because they are also, these, these people, people are saying that when um, the coup happened in Mali and also in um, Burkina Faso, ECOWAS were not as harsh as this on them. So it's like, is there some conspiracy issue or there are some hidden things behind the scenes that the people don't know about? So how do you think the ECOWAS should handle this case? I think ECOWAS are more distracted. They, they don't know their priorities and they should be able to define what they represent and what they stand for. Over the years, there have been gross mismanagement of public funds in different states within ECOWAS that makes ECOWAS. The masses have not been have not felt better either. So what does MA Coas represent? Is it the interest of the masses or the imperial interest of selected few? This is fundamental. I think we begin to doubt the credibility of those who call themselves ECOWAS or the formation of ECOWAS. What does it The creation of ECOWAS intend to achieve? Is it for the interest of the masses? Nigerian masses and the, by extension Africa has been exploited over the years. Africa remains the, the, the cradle of civilization. But now, African soy, African sons and daughters have been enslaved. You see, by foreign countries, by Western world. This is the Africa that controls the world. Uh, the, 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 the era of Egypt, where every country has to go down to Africa to copy or learn one technology or the other innovations. But the reverse is the case. We have the enormous resources in relative abundance, which other Western world come to have to develop their own country. 70% of what you, Europe, America, and other international communities use to run their own states, sustain their own states, country, comes from Africa. Unfortunately, the conspiracy of our political elites by 
guided by corruption. You see, they embezzled the, our treasure, common wealth, and abandoned it in the banks, in Swiss banks and other banks. Why they used to own, boost their own economy at the expense of the African people. So I think I must commend the efforts of those, uh, you call them military junta, but I call them the people's movements. Because African sons and daughters are now realizing the mistake of their past leaders, of their fathers, and have decided to try the way forward. They should not be seen as a military junta. Because when you suffer the freedom of the Nigerians, they are happy with the movements. You are we're happy with the positions. And that redefines, of course, a new wave of revolution in Africa. That is, of course, uh, being piloted by Niger and every consigned individual. Because this must ensure that Africans have their own resources, have their own resources, and develop at their own pace. We are struggling. Let's try look at Nigeria scattered over Nigeria. Why they have enormous natural resources that will develop the their citizens and they benefit from that. So they can resort to riding of Gada, carrying trucks and barrels while in their own father's pilots. Uh, there are kings and slaves eating, of course, uh, the wealth of the country, of the kingdom, while they are feeding on mad crops. So our political class should have a rethink and begin to accept their failures to, for addressing the millions of problems bedeviling Africa. All right, the so moment for Africa, of course, uh, to have a rebirth of a new uh, renovation. Okay, so do you think the Ecowas should go all out with force on Niger, or they should keep on um, talking to them and negotiating them? Ecowas has been defeated. Why? Because it's about the movement of the people. They are pushing because of the interests they want to protect. Personal interests by a few political uh, gladiators, power brokers across the uh, sub saharas They are not there to protect the interests of the masses who have been marginalized, exploited over the years by France and other Western world. They have not, they, they, their, their lives and living standards have not even been left anything better. It's rather unfortunate. So any movement by ECOWAS, of course, will suffer defeat. Already we are seeing it. So it is just a lone soldier uh, trying to impress uh, anybody who cares. But as far as I'm concerned, they have failed already. Any movement by ECOWAS will be vehemently I will volunteer to fight in defense of the position of the Nigerians, if that becomes necessary.